what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I am founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. I'm really excited for today's episode with Zach Wilcox of Bide Freight. And before we get started, Zach, I always like to mention other episodes people should check out of the podcast on Inspired Insider. So I've had some cool guests. Um, check out the episode with the co-founder of Pixar. He talks about some Steve Jobs stories, some George Lucas stories. I also had uh, the founder of P90X, Tony Horton on. And what's interesting about that, Zach, I love hearing the stories about not just the success, but the hard times. And he talked about when he first started, he made his food and rent money as a street mime. He would put his head on the street and do street miming. That's how he made his money. <laughs> and then he went on to, you know, be, you know, the founder of P90X and they sold, you know, hundreds of millions of DVDs and trainings and things like that. That and many more you can check out on inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. And at Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. You know, for me, Zach, you know me a little bit by this point. Mm -hmm. The number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. I found no better way to do that over the past decade than to profile the people and the companies I admire on my podcast and shout from the rooftop so other people can learn about them too. So if out there you've thought about doing a podcast, you should. If you have questions, email us. We're happy to help. You can go to rise25.com or email us at support at rise25.com for any questions you have. I'm excited. We have Zach Wilcox. He's CEO of Five Freight. As I mentioned, he's a leader in the logistics industry. His office is in Michigan, Illinois. They serve Lots of industries. Um, they also serve specifically pharmaceutical companies, healthcare supply companies, as an example. And when I was talking to Zach, really, you know, in sometimes in, I know a lot of uh, companies in the logistics industries, um, and it's not there's not always full transparency. There's not always the, a complete communication with all steps along the journey. And one of the things that Zach and his team pride themselves on is full transparency, communication with all steps from bringing on a client all the way to getting the shipments completed on time. Uh, you can check them out at fidefreight.com. It's F-I-D-E freight.com. Zach, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. I'm really excited uh, to be on uh, your podcast here. And I didn't know that about P90X. Uh, so that's that's new to me. I've already learned something. This is a, this is a great start. We find all sorts of things and we're going to dig deep into, you know, with you, I want to start off, just tell people a little bit about Five Freight and, and what you guys do first. Yeah, so we're a, we're a third party logistics company. So we're, we started out here in Michigan, actually, late 2019. And uh, we started in a couple of niche industries. We actually moved a lot of hemp products. So CBD, CBD oil, you guys have probably heard of that. Uh, so we, we built out that mesh industry and then we were able to hire and expand into uh, larger companies, larger corporations, larger industries overall. And uh, we've had we've had a great journey. We've expanded to Chicago and uh, we're servicing clients all across the country. So we're, we're really excited. Um, we've grown tremendously, not too fast, but definitely not too slow. So, uh, you know, we're two years in, but logistics yeah. had to be crazy, Zach, with Whenever you're listening to this, you probably heard of the pandemic. Okay, maybe whatever it is. <laughs> How did things change? Did things get crazy around the pandemic? It was just the supply chain was um, probably much different than it's ever been before. Yeah, it was really strange. Um, it's it's changed so much since we started. You know, right at the pandemic, it was three months in, and um, you know, we were thankful that the industries we were in weren't too harmed by by the pandemic but there were a lot of companies it was really a blessing to us our industries that we were in weren't weren't harmed they actually uh, were the opposite business. right i yeah. mean you have healthcare yeah. pharmaceutical these are booming during this time yeah absolutely i mean we 
you know, that's why we're really thankful is that happened. And then there were a lot of companies that let people go, let good talent go that we were able to scoop up from other logistics companies. Um, so we were really thankful for, for the pandemic in a strange way, you know, uh, been really nice, nice to us as an organization. How did you get into this industry? Man, um, I mean, it's been, I, I actually had, I didn't have any logistics experience. I was, I was more the side of, uh, I really wanted to start a business. Whereas my cousin who co-founded the company, he wanted to, he was in logistics. So we came together, he left his company. I had just been fired, or not fired, but I was working for a company, started a new, a new manufacturing division there. And we had one big client. And I knew it was a matter of time, if this client goes, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so this client went, you know, and I, went, I actually went out into my car, I started crying in my lap. I was like, man, what do I do? What do I do? And then, uh, you know, I came together with my cousin and we ended up starting this website and then turned it into a company. And I was, you know, I was running to the bank five times a day to send out wires. We had no credit when we started. It was a, it's a real mess, but um, it's been a journey, and, and I didn't think I'd ever be in logistics, but here I am. Yeah, I guess the most dangerous number in a company is one. If you have one big client and that client <laughs> goes, it's you know hard to go to sleep at night when when that's happening. Um, yeah, but it sounds like it's a perfect you know combination with your family member and you. You know, they're the expert in in logistics, and you. Uh, in business. And, you know, before we hit record here, we were talking a little bit about um, some topics I'd love for you to, to talk about, which is um, growing a company with core values. So yeah, talk about that. Uh, um, yeah, I, I think that's really important, um, especially just seeing it from, we put our core values, I really put our core values in place. The second we hired somebody, I thought it was really important to have that. Um, and just to give you one example, one of our core values is systems. Um, so from the beginning, we've always looked at, um, there's a few books that influenced me, um, but from the beginning. What are some of them? So I have them right here, actually. So start with why by, uh, start with why is one. And then the e-myth talks a lot about systems. And so does good to great. I actually have them all right here. I have them in both offices. Um, but I think it was good to great or the e -myth, or a little bit of both. They talked about how your company is more like uh, your company is a system overall. And you plug people in. So you aren't people dependent. So how do you set that up? Um, you set up systems to do everything. You put SOPs in place early on. You make sure that things are repeatable. And it's helped us along the way to prevent uh, repeat mistakes and just allow people to onboard onto the company really fast, uh, much faster than most companies. So we still focus on systems. I mean, we reboot, we, it's, it's called Kaizen. Uh, I come from a manufacturing background, continuously improving. Um, and it's been really important. You hear people in the office talking about, like, could we do this system? Could we do, you hear system thrown out there so much. And that's because it's a core value. I, I talk about it so much. And, um, I think just in general, whatever your core values are, uh, as long as you're, you're talking about them and you're living them within a company, it creates like, uh, you know, it creates a togetherness. You guys are all working towards, you have a bigger why, a bigger purpose. It's really important. Yeah, I'd love for you to, Zach, to talk about another core value. So systems, and I want to tell people just, there was, we, I actually do have an interview with Michael Gerber of the e -Meth. Check it out. It, it's really okay. good. And okay. also Owen McGab, um, who runs the company Sweet Process, which actually is a software that helps you document SOPs. So I encourage anyone listening, check that episode out. Um, because, you know, Zach, you're, you're spot on. I mean, all the people I talk to that come on, you know, the way they're able to grow and um, be accurate efficient is because they have systems in place so i love that you said that what's another core value uh, another core value for us is uh just our clients so people 
systems, clients, and profit. Those are all our big four core values. But in terms of client, we're always trying to provide this above and beyond service. Every shipment, every client, every time. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, if you have a tractor and you will never do business with this again, but you need to move it from A to B, or if you're a large corporate public company that has a thousand shipments a day. Um, we treat you with respect and we try to provide this above and beyond service every shipment, every client, every time. And we have big letters on our wall and our sales floor above and beyond. You know, I, I love it. It just, when we're talking about it, we're talking about, hey, should I do this? Should I tell the client this? Should I tell them this? Well, what gives them that above and beyond service? What, what would go above and beyond? What do they expect? Great. They expect that. Let's do this one step higher. Um, so I, we talked about that in our conversations too, um, just the above and beyond approach, everything we do. Speak, Zach, to the moving tractors situation. There was a specific instance. Yeah, I mean, just moving tractors in general and then going back to the above and beyond uh, service or experience, I think uh, it's pretty unique for us because a lot of times when we get those quotes, they come in through the website. They go to an email, a distribution email to our whole sales team. And our goal there, we're trying to get that quote, trying to call them or email quote to them in under a minute 30. We don't have it automated, um, but under a minute 30 is our target time on new quotes. And we get it a lot of the times. So I will say that people will pick up, they'll say, uh, I just put that in, I just clicked submit. Are you, is it? Yeah, that's us. You know, what, what can we do for you? <laughs> So we're, we like to uh, hold that standard. I love it. Yeah, if you go to the website, everyone goes to five freight, uh, FID freight, uh, com. you can see right front and center is uh, you can re request a quote, quote and you put it in and you guys are super be, fast. Be careful, Jeremy. You'll, you're going to get a call during this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> how, how do you, because um, again, we've all dealt with companies. It could take them. Um, an hour, a day, a week to get back. What's the one of the secrets to um, doing this? And it kind of goes into hiring, I imagine. And I love to talk about um, how do you, um, what's the process for hiring? And specifically, let's talk about customer service per, first with hiring. And we'll talk about other aspects of the company too. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, hiring is... Um... There's when, so I created a, a flywheel. Um, and I want to say that book is, I want to say that is good to great, is the flywheel concept. Um, so when we look at our flywheel as a company, what does it start with? It always starts with higher fit people. So you really have to step back and say, what is, someone who's fit for this position? What am I looking for? What questions can I ask during the interview during the interview process to really dig out what does a fit person mean for my company? You can't always get it. You can't always get it. I've had some good hires. I've had some bad hires. I learn quickly which one's which, but the idea is that um, whenever we're trying to do anything, it starts with fit people. Then you have a great training program. And then from there, you give a great service, you bring on more clients, you bring on more clients, you hire more fit people. It's the flywheel concept that we have here, but it all starts with how you interview and those questions you ask to really filter out, um, is somebody telling the truth? If anybody can give a great interview. They can prepare, they can have, uh, you know, they can have words ready, they can have all these phrases, I've heard it, cookie cutter answers. And sometimes you don't catch that and you're like, oh, this person's great. Sometimes you're like, you ask something out of the box and you're like, what? Uh, yeah, I don't know how to answer that. So um, hiring, hiring is very important. Just as important as training people once you bring them up. What's uh, the process for training, right? Because someone may come in, maybe they're a good fit, and they're not used to responding within a minute and a half to something. And, and then when they get on saying the right things and making that person feel welcome and comforted and professional, what's the, the process for training? 
Well, we to, to hit on the welcome part, we have a great, great uh, office admin here who, who helps us. She puts up a big welcome sign with their name. So they walk in the door and it's welcome, welcome kind, welcome. You know, and it, it just sets that setting, that tone. But then I spend a whole day, spend a whole day with this person. We don't hire too many people at a time, two maximum. Um, like I said, we're, we're, not, we're not growing too fast, but um, so I spend a whole day with them. And I talk a lot about the systems, our core values, what we're trying to build here, um, how they can be successful. And I talk a lot about um, their path and what was great at their past, what wasn't great. How was your culture? What did you like? What didn't you like? And kind of hit on those things. But um, with training, <laughs> the key is to have, have enough people that can train. And I think that's what we're running into. It's like, we're all so busy. This company is just, it's, it's growing um, in terms of our clients and stuff. So we're having a hard time like, giving people enough attention to train. So we put in some systems to, uh, we put in an LMS, a learning management software that we're actually implementing uh, in the next couple of weeks that is going to help us big time and help the people that we bring on. I mean, if you have an all-star and you don't teach them how to, you know, hit the ball, they're probably not going to hit the ball. They could be an all-star deep down, but if they don't know how to hit the ball or swing, it, you got a problem. So that is, it's really important. One of the keys to success for you, it seems in a short period of time is hiring really experienced people also. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you said, um, you know, your family member is really experienced. You brought in other experienced people to help run those aspects uh, of the business. Um, you know, was it, you know, as far as your, your family member had connections in the industry that seems like, you know, you fill in these gaps where you don't have the expertise and the same thing goes for your, your family member too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, We've done that all along. Uh, he's actually no longer with the company, but he helped, he did help found it, but he's no longer with the company. But uh, we have, early on, we, we, he, he knew a few people in the industry, which helped us. Um, and then, like I said, during COVID, um, a lot of people were letting, letting talent go. So we were scooping it up. We may not have been able to afford the talent, or we may not have been able to manage the talent, but we scooped them up and we figured it out um, during COVID. And even now, um, a lot of times it's, I'll see talent, uh, our HR will see talent and, and we'll scoop it right up, um, you know, anytime, any opportunity we get. Zach, much um, out there. Zach, I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second, okay? I'm a big public company, all right? And, um, I'm like, listen, Zach, there's these huge brokers, like huge brokers out there. You know, Zach, why would I go with you when I can go with some of the biggest brokers out there who could maybe service a public company like me? I mean, that's, that's a great, that's something we run into uh, very often is working or being challenged against the biggest brokerages in the industry. I mean, uh, I can think of a few clients that we brought on who uh, large public companies that now exclusively work with us, one in specific who thought, oh, well, we need a provider. They brought on the biggest name that they could find. And it all was great during the honeymoon stage. And then it kind of dwindled out and they couldn't even get a hold of anybody there. So it was a very easy transition when we told them, hey, you get somebody dedicated, you'll get personal service. Here's my cell phone. Here's the director of sales cell phone. You call any of us anytime. And so we, we just, we really beat the competition on service and uh, just being personable, being there. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was interesting to hear that a large company was struggling to get a hold of somebody uh, at, a, at this firm. Uh, it was surprising, but it put a smile on my face. I will say that. So what are the biggest issues you see that your customers come to you with? Um, 
You know, a lot of times, I would say a lot of times the issue is that when we're competing against other brokerages, they will, you accept, you say, hey, I'll move something from A to B. Yeah, I can do that at this cost. Then they figure out they can't do it at that cost after they already committed to it. So they go back to the customer and they say, hey, you know, I can't move it at this cost. I, I got to give it back. Someone else has to move this. Um, that's, that's one of our philosophies that we abide by is not giving stuff back. Um, when we, if we commit to it, if we take it, that's across the board. Internally, when we're talking to my other employees, if I commit to something, and same with the customers, if we commit to something, we're going to stand by it. That's just what we will do, whether it's, it doesn't matter the cost, it doesn't matter anything except the fact that we committed at this time, we'll make it happen. So uh, that's, that's an area where we really excel. It's like, what are some of the milestones that when you think of the company, these are milestones you're especially proud of? Um, I mean, last year we went 50%. Uh, I mean, I guess as a company, sales is always a great milestone, right? Being able to sell more or grow more. But I think that a more of a subjective milestone is, are people happy to come to work? Are people happy to come to work? And you can ask them. And you can have multiple people ask them. Are you actually happy to come here? Do you come here and do you have a smile on your face? Maybe not every day, but more often than not. Um, and I think if we continue to do that, we continue to hit our quarterly milestones uh, around systems and building platforms, then the sky, the sky's the limit for us. Um, but in terms of sales numbers, I mean, we're, we're kind of blowing out those numbers that we set last year and then this year as well already. So we're pretty excited about that. That kind of comes with the great culture, great people. Yeah, you mentioned the people and the culture. What are things that you do that uh, helps you maintain a good culture that other companies should think about as well? I mean, we talk about it all the time. We challenge ourselves all the time on what a great culture is. We're, um, we talk about building a foundation here as we're smaller. We have 25 people. Um, just all of us keeping this very secure, this tight knit, you know, let's, let's hold on to this. This is our foundation. Um, and what builds that is not, not necessarily just breakfast on Wednesday mornings. That's great. Um, but continuing to bring on people that have the same philosophy of culture is very important and bringing on people that fit. Um, there's companies, I won't get too far into it, but there's companies that do hire, uh, you know, 30 people at a time. How do you maintain a culture hiring 30 people at a time? I think that'd be very difficult. That's why we hire slow and we're, we're not growing as fast as we could, but we are protecting our culture and growing slow to protect that culture. So it's very important. I want to go back, Zach, to the inception of the company for a second. If anyone's watching the video, um, I am amazed by what you've done. You're a young guy. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing, right? When you were talking to first start this company, I would think it'd be a bit scary, like just the path that you took. Uh, I know that you kind of a background in engineering. Um, what made you decide to make that leap? Because you could have after that job, go, cool, listen, I'm a smart guy. I'm going to go and work for another manufacturing company. I'll be successful. It is a big undertaking to start the company. So what was yeah. your thought on? at that time when you were talking to your, your family member? Yeah, um, it, it was a big undertaking because it was all built with the leftover college student loans that I had. So that was kind of, uh, that, was, that was a bit you risky too. I was, I was supposed to give those back, but ultimately that's what ended up starting and funding uh, the first few months of this business. Uh, I mean, since, since the age of, age of 15, um, I've been reading business books. I've been in the market. Um, I bought and sold a, a CBD business while in college. Um, 
decent, decent uh, exit on that. I, I've always been, I've never been happy at a job. And I think a lot of people feel that. I think a lot of people feel that maybe they aren't so happy at a job. And um, we all have the opportunity to go out and build something and it's, it, it takes time and you have to get it. Yeah, I think that you have to think about it for a very long time and you have to almost obsess about starting a business and building it out. Uh, and that's, that's what I did for seven, eight years before starting this and um, come a long way. It's been really fun though, some days. First of all, Zach, I have one last question for you. Before I do, I just want to point people towards your website. I just appreciate your approach and sharing some of the lessons learned and people should go to fidefreight.com. It's F-I-D-E-F-R-E-I-G-H-T.com. My last question is, um, it, it's apparent that you're an avid reader. Um, so I'd love to hear any other books that you would recommend people uh, read or listen to outside of, I know you mentioned EMF, Good to Great, Start With Why, any others that stick out or any other people, mentors or uh, books that you recommend people check out? Yeah, um, I think in terms of men mentors, uh, Patrick Beck David, I talked to you actually about him a little bit. Patrick Beck David has a really good channel called Valuetainment that I grew up on, if you will, when I started in this business. Um, and these are all business, these are all business based, the myth, good to great, uh, Patrick Beth David, but some, some maybe just mental growth books are the untethered soul, the power of now, I uh, just read both of those recently, and then awaken the giant within by Tony Robbins, it's, it's a bit dated, I will say that, but um, it's interesting to hear his perspective. And I've, I've read all these books in, the, in a matter of a month, and it's been uh, very good for your soul, for your, for your mental, um, more than just thinking about business all the time, how to grow, how to hire people, how to do all this stuff. Like think about yourself a little bit too. And it pays dividends. It pays dividends to work on personal growth as much as uh, the business growth. So it's been really powerful. I love that, Zach. Read those books. Thank you. A number of people have actually mentioned untethered soul. So maybe it's a it's, sign I should probably pick it up. It's not one I have but I love Tony Robbins stuff. I think over here I have the whole personal power series and okay. some other things. So I, I love that suggestion uh, as well. Waking the giant within. So mm -hmm. Zach, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone check out fidefreight.com and more episodes of the podcast, Inspired Insider and Rise 25. And thanks everyone. Thanks, Zach. Thank you so much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See nights like a beach If you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand